Hello and welcome. Thank you for participating in Moorhead at Home Skywatching, hosted by Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. My name is Amy Sale. I'm an educator at Moorhead. We are a unit of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, located on campus. We also work throughout the state through a number of outreach initiatives like our mobile lab vans, summer camp programs, and the annual North Carolina Science Festival. Our mission is to help people better understand science, technology, and health, and we do this through engaging learning opportunities like this live virtual program. And uh, my colleague Nick will get us started. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Moorhead at Home Skywatching. We're excited you're with us today. Um, and we have an exciting topic. If you've been following your space news for the last couple of weeks, you might know that there are a number of missions to Mars that are in the works. Um, and in fact, NASA's uh, next Mars rover is going to be launching. The, the plan is to launch it on Thursday morning. So um, just a couple of days from now. So what we thought was both of our sessions this week on Tuesday and Thursday, we could focus on the planet Mars. And we're going to kind of split it up um, for you so that we can um, have enough time to talk about all this interesting stuff. Today, we're going to focus on the new Mars rover, um, what it is, how it works, how it's going to get to Mars. And on Thursday, we'll talk a little bit more about some past Mars missions and what we've learned about Mars from them. So never fear. We do want to encourage you um, throughout the session today, and if you join us on Thursday, to ask us questions. Um, and if there are questions you have that we don't happen to get to today, that's actually okay, because we will try to take them into consideration for our next session on Thursday as well. But the way you can ask questions is by using the Q&A function, which if you're on a computer, it's at the bottom of your screen. And if you're on a phone or a tablet, I think it's on the top of your screen. Um, but that way you can type in anything that you're curious about for us. And then at the end of the session, we will try to take some time to, to answer those. Um, so with that, um, Generally, in our sky watching sessions, we do a lot of looking at the sky, but today we're actually not going to look at the sky. We will try to point out um, on Thursday where you can find Mars um, rising a little bit before midnight here in, in North Carolina. But um, we're going to show you some images and some websites and some videos today that we will try to link you to throughout the presentation so that you can have all of these resources at your fingertips as you get excited for the launch on Thursday. Um, so with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you can uh, see an image of the red planet. Um, and hopefully y'all can see this well. Um, Mars is the, the star of the show this week. And of course, it's not a star, it's a planet. But it's um, an interesting target for us in our solar system because we've already explored it a lot and found out that we want to go back and explore it even more. It has a solid surface like our Earth. We can stand on Mars. Um, it has some really interesting geological features. As you can see in this image, um, maybe there are canyons and, and uh, mountains and ice caps and, and all sorts of things that make us really curious about the red planet. So um, we're interested in learning more about it. You might know about previous rovers like Spirit and Opportunity and Curiosity um, that have already taught us a lot about the surface and and maybe even some about the past of Mars, uh, but we're sending another one. And up until a few months ago, this rover was called Mars 2020 rover, um, which makes sense. It was launching here in uh, the year 2020, um, but it got a new name a couple months ago. And Amy, I, th I think we wanted to talk a little bit about how it got that new name. Right, so NASA held an essay contest um, to choose the name for this rover that's about to be launched this Thursday, July 30th, if all goes well with weather. Um, and it was a middle school student from Virginia that won the contest. Um, and uh, the name that was picked is Perseverance, which basically means persisting at something despite facing difficulties or delays or other obstacles. And so the name of the rover is Perseverance. I think we can show you an image of it now. This image is, is uh, an artist's representation of what Perseverance uh, looks like and what it would look like on the surface of Mars. So um, to many of you who maybe followed Mars missions before, it probably looks really familiar. Perseverance is actually really similar in size and function to the Curiosity rover um, that we launched a number of years back. But there are some really unique and cool differences that we'll try to talk about today. Um, and um, just remember that this is what you can imagine, you know, seven, eight months from now, 
um, once this thing safely gets down to the surface of Mars. Um, and one of the things I always like to point out is that this rover is drilling holes into the, uh, the surface of Mars to help us understand its geology even better. Um, so very exciting, but there is a lot of work to get it into shape before it can take its big trip out into space. Um, so we wanted to point out this image of the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover in the clean room, um, which is a place where they can uh, kind of assemble all the instruments and test them out um, before um, this thing gets ready to launch. And you notice all of the scientists in this image, um, they're wearing what we call bunny suits. Um, they're completely um, kind of sealed up and, and protected because um, we want to keep all of the hardware on this, this rover safe. And um, as you know, you might even be hyper aware right now, human beings have lots of germs and, um, you know, can kind of put things from our body out into the air and, and surfaces around us. Um, so one of the main goals of these rovers is to answer a big question, which is, is there life on Mars? Was there life on Mars? And if we're trying to really specifically answer that question, we need to make sure that no life from Earth um, kind of interrupts the mission of the rover. So that's one of the big reasons why when they're putting everything together, they wear these bunny suits or clean suits because we want to make sure no human contaminants um, get anywhere near our rover. Um, so I always think that that's a kind of neat thing. Um, but this thing, as you notice, it looks like a really, really complicated golf cart and it has lots of different scientific instruments. Yeah, so um, this picture gives you a, just a an idea of all the different kinds of scientific instruments it's got on it. So as Nick mentioned, one of the things this rover is going to do is search for signs of past life on Mars. Um, and so it's going to be checking out the geology. It's got instruments to see if there's direct evidence of minerals that form in the presence of water. It's got um, instruments to detect chemical byproducts of ancient life. Um, it's also going to be doing some of laying some of the groundwork for humans to eventually go to Mars. So it's got an instrument on it called MOXIE, which is going to be a test, um, a technology demonstration of the ability to extract oxygen from the carbon dioxide atmosphere on Mars. And oxygen is important. Humans breathe it. Also, it's important for making rocket fuel if you'd like to leave the planet <laughs> as well. Um, and uh, Nick also alluded to um, the samples. It's going to collect samples of Martian rocks and dirt and store them away um, with the idea that a future mission will come and retrieve these samples and send them back to Earth. We have not done that before. We have not sent Martian rocks back to Earth. And that's important because on Earth we have fancy laboratories and even fancier scientific instruments and it's much easier to analyze the sample if we can bring it back to us. And uh, Nick, Mars, this Martian rover also is bringing a, a friend with it. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Th these rovers are so neat because to me, they, they kind of showcase some of humanity's coolest science experiments. It's like some of the coolest science experiments you can think of are packed into this rover and we're going to try to take the time to um, do these science experiments on the surface of Mars. And one of them that's new about the Perseverance rover um, is a friend that is bringing along with it. It's actually a helicopter um, that has been named Ingenuity by NASA. And it's going to be one of the first powered launches, um, uh, powered test flight launches of, of something of its kind uh, once it gets down to the surface. And the, the, the remote controlled helicopter will be able to lift off into the thin Martian atmosphere and fly around and survey the ground. Kind of like a neat way to make a map for the Perseverance rover to find interesting sites to survey. Um, so I can show you an image of kind of how this um, helicopter looks. It kind of looks like a drone that we would see here on the Earth, um, and it's and it's controlled in a similar way. But um, it has to navigate uh, an atmosphere that's different than our Earth atmosphere. Um, we know that we have a big, thick atmosphere here on Earth filled with nitrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide and all of these things, but the atmosphere of Mars, it exists. It's just way thinner. So we had to account for that when we made this super light um, helicopter. 
And I think that's just a really neat way to, you know, think about how we use technology. This, this robot is going to help another robot uh, find its way. And they're all controlled from, from right here on Earth. Um, and this is not the only helicopter that NASA has planned. One of my favorite upcoming missions that just got approval to uh, kind of really get into its process is called Dragonfly. And the Dragonfly mission is, is a helicopter that's going to go even further out into space. Dragonfly's goal is to go to the largest moon of Saturn called Titan. And its helicopter is going to go into the atmosphere of Titan. It's the only moon in the solar system that we know of that has a big atmosphere. It's going to travel in there and maybe teach us even more about a more distant world. So this isn't the last helicopter you're going to hear about, um, but that's one really neat difference between Perseverance and Curiosity is that it's going to kind of have its own eyes in the sky um, when it's there on the surface. And where's it going? That's, you know, the next question we wanted to talk about. Yeah, so um, it's going to be going Perseverance and its friend Ingenuity um, are going to land in a place on Mars called Jezero Crater. And um, What's interesting about the naming of the craters on Mars, they're named by the International Astronomical Union. These are the same people who demoted Pluto, by the way. Um, and craters that are up to 50 kilometers um, big get named after small towns and villages. And so Jezero is, is named after a Bosnian town. And um, the reason why it makes such a great site for it to go is that there used to be a lake here a long time ago, something like the size of Lake Tahoe. Um, and everywhere on Earth where we see water, we see life. So if there used to be a lake here, then maybe there's signs that there was life here in the past. And we're, we're not talking life like dinosaurs or fish necessarily, but small forms of life, microbial life. And so that's the interest in this particular landing site. Okay, but speaking of landing, this rover isn't going to teleport itself to Mars. Is it? How's it going to get there? That's a really good question. I know we tend to get ahead of ourselves thinking about all the cool things it's going to do once it's there on the surface, but there's also a lot of cool science and math and physics involved in getting these rovers to the planet Mars. It's a big trip, um, and we were thinking of good ways to kind of explain this trip uh, to Mars to you all, but we found a video that we think really, really covers it well. Um, and it makes sense that it covers it well because it was made by NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So it is exactly one minute long. So we thought we could take that one minute here with you and go ahead and show you this nice video um, of how, um, how we launch things to Mars. So make sure um, you know, your volume is up a little bit on your device. I'm gonna play this for us. Uh, we'll discuss it a little bit after our, our minute has gone. We're going to see how we get to Mars. How do you get to Mars? If you want to send a spacecraft all the way to Mars, first you'll need a fast rocket to escape the pull of Earth's gravity. The heavier your spacecraft, the more powerful your rocket needs to be to lift off. Next, make sure you launch at the right time. Mars and Earth orbit the Sun at different speeds and distances. Sometimes they're really far apart, and other times they come closer together. About every two years, the two planets are in perfect positions to get to Mars with the least amount of rocket fuel. That's important. The total trip is over 300 million miles. Finally, make sure your aim is right. You can't shoot for where Mars is at launch time. You have to aim for where it will be when you get there. It's a lot like how a quarterback passes a football. Also, you may need a few thrusts to correct your direction along the way so you don't miss Mars. If all goes well, you'll get to the red planet in about seven or eight months. Then, if you actually want to land on Mars, well, that's a whole other challenge. Okay, so um, I really like that video because I think it really succinctly shows us, you know, there's a lot of things to consider when you um, talk about launching in space. I think the point about launching the, the rover to where Mars is going to be is probably one of the best things to remember. Um, and that's why rocket science and, and uh, aeronautics and propulsion science is so hard. You have to plan for things that are constantly moving out there in space. Um, so we are gonna put the link to that video in the chat if you ever wanna go back and reference it. Um, it's a minute long and there's a whole series of Mars in a minute videos um, that we think are really, really cool um, that y'all can check out as well. Um, so that's kind of some of the science behind how it's going to get there, um, but we can be a little more um, literal about how it's going to get there and talk about the rocket. 
um, that Perseverance is going to fly on. Um, so um, this is an artistic representation of what our launch on Thursday might look like. Um, you see the big payload, which is where that rover is actually enclosed here at the top of the rocket. We have the big solid booster. Um, and this rocket is called the Atlas V. Uh, made by the United Launch Alliance, or ULA. Um, and the Atlas V has, has taken many, many trips into space. It's not one of those reusable rockets, but, but this design has taken many, many trips into space, including previous Mars rovers um, and previous Mars missions, missions like InSight and uh, Curiosity and MAVEN. Um, they, they've uh, flown from Earth to Mars in this vehicle. Um, and I think that's kind of a cool connection to use the same type of launch vehicle to, to go to the same place. Um, so we have a question for y'all though, because some of us might have seen a rocket launch before, some of us might not have. I'm kind of curious how big these things really are. Because um, to me, when it's up in the sky, it looks really, really big. But I don't know, Amy, I think we, maybe we can compare it to some things. Yeah, so okay, no cheating. Now don't get on the internet to go look up the answer. Try to just make a guess and it's okay if you get it wrong. Okay, so here's the question. We're gonna ask you to guess about how tall is an Atlas V rocket. Okay, we've given you three options. So pick one and then submit your answer. So your first option, and Nick is actually gonna show you pictures of each of these options, is the uh, rocket, and you might need to move the question around if you've still got it so that you can see this picture better. Is the rocket about as tall as the Moorhead sundial, the gnomon of the, the sundial, the part that sticks up into the air? That's about 20 feet. So do you think the rocket's about that tall, about as tall as the sundial in front of Moorhead Planetarium? So pick that if you think that is the right answer. Okay, here's another possibility. Do you think the rocket is about as tall as Moorhead Planetarium's full dome theater? About 45 feet. So we're showing you the outside of the building and the theater is actually in kind of that middle part that Nick is showing, out, showing with his pointer. Um, and the dome at the top is, is roughly 45 feet at its height. So is the Atlas V rocket that tall? Okay, we'll give you one more option. Or is the Atlas V rocket about as tall as UNC's bell tower, the Moorhead Patterson bell tower, which is about 172 feet tall? So make your best guess. And then um, we'll consider that question. And I think we can type in questions. One more one more sure. time here. Sundial, planetarium, bell tower. How tall do you think the rocket is? That's if all goes well, we'll launch Thursday morning, 7.50 a.m. Eastern time. All right. I wonder if we're ready to see people's answers. Here's another picture of the rocket. Here we go. Okay, it looks like most people thought about as tall as UNC's bell tower. Some people thought maybe it's about as tall as our full dome theater. And what's the answer? Um, it looks like most of you all got it right. Um, the fully loaded up uh, Atlas V rocket um, is about a hundred and what did we say? 197 feet tall. So um, 191 with the payload. 191 feet, which is just a little bit taller than the UNC bell tower. So if next time you're on campus, <laughs> take a look at the bell tower and then imagine a rocket next to it that's even taller. <laughs> and um, I, I think that's a great comparison. Maybe you have something near you that um, if you're not here in Chapel Hill with us, that's, a, that's about the same height as well. Um, so even though it, it's very unlikely that anybody is gonna be down in Florida at, at the Kennedy Space Center for this launch, um, we're gonna try to give y'all some resources um, for what to expect when you watch the launch. And we're in luck um, because this launch is very similar to the launch of the Curiosity rover. Um, so what we thought we could do um, is before we give you all the details for how to watch on Thursday, we have a video um, of a launch uh, that, that happened not too long ago. Um, and uh, we wanted to share that with you so that you can kind of see what to expect here. Um, so what I'm going to do is bring up our second video here. Um, and just remember, this is not you know looking into the future. Um, this is looking back to the launch of the Curiosity rover. Um, so we're gonna play maybe about 30 seconds of this um, so you can see what to expect to get you excited for Thursday. Here we go. T minus 15 seconds. T 
minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Main engine start, zero, and lift off of the Atlas V with curiosity. Seeking clues to the planetary puzzle about life on Mars. I'm going to pause this right here. The whole thing's cool. This whole video is about um, four minutes long. Um, but um, we're also going to link you to that as well, so you can have it if you want to check out the launch video yourself. Um, but, but that is similar to what you can expect to see. Um, the launch vehicle looks similar. Um, the countdown and things like that should be similar, um, but it's a really exciting thing to watch. You know, we want to reiterate that there are no human beings um, on this uh, rocket. Um, it's a little different than some of the, the more recent uh, rocket launches, say, to the International Space Station that we've been talking about, um, but it does carry that very special payload um, in, the, in the Perseverance rover. And it's going to take a while to get there. You know, it's got to travel millions of miles. And so um, the, the rover's going to arrive at Mars on February 18th, 2021. And um, an interesting part of this whole journey is that the last seven minutes are very fraught. So what's gonna happen is this thing is going to get to the top of the Martian atmosphere going like 12,000 miles an hour. And then it's gonna take seven minutes, it's gonna have seven minutes to get to the surface of Mars. And it's gotta slow down enough to land safely. You can't slam into Mars at 12,000 miles an hour. Your rover's not gonna work after that. Well, here's the thing, it takes seven minutes to go from the top of the atmosphere to the surface of Mars. Mars is gonna be something like 10 light minutes away from us at that time, uh, based on where it, it is in its orbit and where we are in our orbit, which means that when that spacecraft wants to send a message to Earth to say, hey, I'm doing what, I'm, what you said I should do, it'll be at the top of the atmosphere going 12,000 miles an hour, it'll send a signal saying, hey, I'm here. Well, by the time that signal gets to Earth 10 minutes later, the rover will already be on the surface of Mars, hopefully intact. <laughs> um, and if you want to see a video, um, we're dropping into chat a link for the seven minutes of terror video. Now, just to confuse you, the video itself is actually five minutes long, but the video is called Seven Minutes of Terror, and it's about the entry, descent, and landing process uh, for a Martian rover like Curiosity or like Perseverance. And Nick, I think you and I have both watched this video more than a few times. It is just about the most exciting educational video I think I have seen in my life. I've probably watched it a few dozen times. So as soon as we finish today, I highly recommend uh, load up that URL for the seven minutes of terror video and take a look at it so you can get really excited, not just for the launch this Thursday, if all goes well, but for the landing on February 28th, 2021. Um, oh, also, I wanted to mention, Nick, there's this aluminum plate on the rover that has um, uh, these three silicon chips that have etched on them the names of more than 10 million people. You could sign up to send your name to Mars. I signed up. Too late now to send your name on the Perseverance rover, but it's not too late to send your name to Mars on a future mission, like maybe the mission that will go to Mars to try to retrieve the samples. Um, that the rover uh, stores away. And can, Nick, do you think we could show them the website? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we can share our web page here. Um, this is the send, send Your Name to Mars website, and I believe we put the um, link to that in the chat for you as well. We um, but here, here's the deal. You know, you put in your first name, last name, some other details, and <laughs> I love that it says it allows you to track your fre frequent flyer points. Um, <laughs> That your name will accrue as as you go to Mars. <laughs> you can get a boarding pass too. <laughs> and Nick, you sent your name on other spacecraft, right? I did. The last one that I sent my name up on was the Parker Solar Probe, another space probe that's actually studying our sun. Um, so hopefully my name isn't sweating too much out there near the sun. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so how are we all going to watch this launch? Great question. I know we've we've told you a lot of information today all about, you know, how this works, why we're excited about it, but we want to give you the tools to be able to watch it. So we're um, 
I'm going to share another web page window here for you real quick that gives us all the details. Um, it can get a little bit complicated because you see here, there is a launch period of time. Um, the folks at NASA are generally always going to try to launch these spacecraft at the beginning of their launch window um, be, because they, they plan lots of different options here. So right now, you know, if the weather holds up and everything looks good, um, our launch is going to be Thursday morning at 7.50 a.m. for us here on the East Coast. I know that is early, but Amy and I are going to get up early to watch it. Um, and, you know, everything will go well and we'll be able to talk about it a little bit on Thursday. Um, but this site is really great. Um, we should be able to put that in the chat for you as well. If you want more details about, you know, the Kennedy Space Center or how to watch online, this is probably the part that um, I want y'all to remember. You can watch this live. Um, you can stream it um, from this NASA website or from, from YouTube, I think it links to as well. Um, and then there's all sorts of other images and overviews and fact sheets. So I know that we only took about, you know, 20 minutes to talk about this really complicated mission, but we really encourage y'all um, to go to this website and, and explore a little bit more. You can even go to a Rover quick facts page um, and it'll tell you even more about that Rover, but uh, mark your calendars. If you're on the East coast, Launch time is 7.50 a.m. Um, and uh, I believe the stream starts up um, and all of the, you know, um, media stuff starts up at about 7. Um, so if, if you want to get an earlier start, you'll be able to do that as well. And the, the window on the 30th lasts for about two hours. So if they, for some reason, can't launch right at 7.50 a.m., it may be a little bit later. Um, and if you're wondering about why is there only like this, you know, couple of week period, it, to send a spacecraft to Mars efficiently, you can only do it about once every 26 months, and then you have a few weeks uh, within that period. And what's interesting is no matter when they launch, it's going to arrive February 18th, 2021, even if they launch it uh, into August. Okay, um, I think we've got a final poll question for you all. If you could help us out by letting us know how many people are watching on your screen right now, whether it's just you or more people, and then... Um, We'll take a look at the the questions that you all have submitted while you're doing that. There's so many good ones. I know we uh, we gave you all a lot of links today, um, but I see a good question that kind of relates back to that helicopter um, that we talked about that I can go ahead and take. It, sa it says, does the helicopter have a certain amount of battery? Great question. You know you have to recharge batteries here on the earth if you're using a drone or or something of the like. Um, and you might have seen it in that image, but the, the helicopter ingenuity actually is powered by solar panels. Um, so it, you know, if all goes well and it doesn't get covered up by a dust storm or something like that, um, it should have that nice renewable energy from the sun uh, to be able to keep going. Okay, I see many good questions. Um, how big is Mars compared to Earth? Smaller than Earth? Um, Somebody's got questions about water. So we're, we're confident there was water on Mars in the past. Um, in terms of whether there's liquid water on Mars today, there's some really exciting um, evidence a few years back from one of the orbiters of Mars that indicated that maybe there was um, uh, liquid water appearing seasonally. Um, and then some more research was done and it looks like, well, actually maybe that wasn't flowing water, it was flowing sand. Um, so we still have a lot to learn about Mars and we're gonna, we'll be looking into this more on Thursday as well. Yeah, we don't wanna leave you hanging too much, but the cool thing is if you get prepared to watch this launch, we can give you a lot more information about what we've already discovered there. And, and that kind of shows us why we're so excited about this. We um. We love these planetary science missions that help us explore things. And that kind of relates to another question I see here, which is if there are no humans on the rocket, how does the rocket take off? How is it controlled? Thanks, Hema, for that question. That's a really good one. Um, that's one of the neat things. Uh, most of these planetary missions that are, that are robots like Perseverance, they're controlled from one place here on the Earth, and it's in Pasadena, California at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So if you've seen any of those, um, you know, logos or things like that that say JPL, that's the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and it's a center of NASA. So there are scientists that actually can control the robotic spacecraft um, via radio signals that travel at the speed of, of light and code programmed into the robots themselves uh, to control them, to tell them what to do from here on Earth. 
So that's one of the reasons why that um, seven minutes of terror that Amy mentioned is kind of important is we do have to wait um, for our signals to get to and from these rovers um, uh, once they're out there at Mars. So we can plan everything really, really well from here on Earth, but um, we still have to be careful about how, how we can get it commands and information. Um, but it's a really neat way that um, uh, the JPL is able to do that with all sorts of probes out there in space. All right. Well, it looks like we are right out of time, Nick. So um, we'll take a look at your questions and see if we can get to some of them that we didn't get to today on Thursday as well. Yeah. And, you know, we're um, obviously pretty excited about this launch. We hope this has gotten you excited as well. And if you want more information about what Moorhead is doing right now, please, please, please follow our website um, on this slide. We also have social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, these Moorhead at Home skywatching sessions are recorded and then later posted on YouTube. So if you go check out our YouTube slash Moorhead Planetarium, um, you can see all sorts of videos that we've done from the past few months and even maybe watch a 360 planetarium show. We have lots of stuff out there for you um, because we miss seeing you on UNC's campus. And um, hopefully this uh, gives you some good information and some good plans uh, for the launch on Thursday. So with that, thank you all so much for um, joining us today. We'll see you on Thursday morning. Bye. See you Thursday. <laughs>